Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about setting the preferences and important keyboard shortcuts for the brush tool. I'm using CC 2018 release. As of this release, the way the brush panel is organized has totally changed. I've covered it in a previous video, link down below or up above. This is going to be about keyboard shortcuts and what you should set in preferences to get the most out of your brush. Command or Control K, system dependent. Under General, this is for the preferences of course, Color Picker should be on Adobe. Hue Wheel is my choice. You can pick the strip. I would say Hue Wheel Medium is best. Under Tools, under Options, use Shift key for Tool Switch. On by default, untick it. You press B, kept pressing it, you would cycle through the drawing tools. If you press B uh, with this ticked, you won't go anywhere. So it saves you making mistakes. So you have to go shift and B. Very round brush hardness based on HUD, heads up display, vertical movement. I keep it ticked. It's the best way to change the hardness on the fly. Cursors, keep it on normal brush tip. Standard is no good to anyone. Precise, you don't really need it because I'll show you a little tip in a minute. So normal brush tip is fine. What it means though, is you only see 50% of the brush if you've got a very soft brush. So you only see the sort of 50% opaque bit in the middle. And as it gets less opaque, you won't see it. You don't need full size brush tip. It might even have performance issues if you use it as well. Right, show crosshair and brush tip. It's so tiny, it's not worth it. What I do is show only crosshair while painting. So I have a circle, as I start to paint, it turns into a crosshair. I prefer that method. Show brush leash while smoothing. It's a little leash that comes out of your brush tip. It is useful, keep it ticked. You can pick another color besides pink or purple. One more, technology previews. Enable paint symmetry. The previews are about Adobe trialing stuff. I really like this, I hope it doesn't go away. So tick it, you might have to restart Photoshop once you ticked it. Okay, I've not had any problems with it. If it's causing my system to crash, I wouldn't tick it, of course. Okay. I'm on the brush tool now, shift and B, pencil tool, shift key press, keep pressing B, color replacement tool, mix a brush, back to the brush. B for brush. Changing the size on the fly, square bracket keys. Right one going now, left one going now. I believe the increments are 10%, but it works like this. If you're on a five pixel brush and you went right click with the right hand square bracket key, it'll go to six pixels. If you're on 10 pixels, it will go to 15 and so on and so forth. So I think that is 10%. I'm trying to do the math in my head. The other way of changing the brush size is by using the heads up display. On a Mac, control or option. On a PC or Windows system, I should say, alt and right click kept pressed. If you're on a UK um, Mac, for instance, your keyboard won't have an option key, it'll have an alt key. But in America, they have the option key. Most of the English speaking world have got Macs, live in America, so I will say option for Mac all the time. So control and option, press down together, or alt and right click, right to make it larger, left to make it smaller. Also while we're here, changing the hardness. We ticked in the preferences, uh, use it the heads up display for hardness, so control option, or alt and right click, Going up or down would change the hardness. Going up makes it softer, going down makes it harder. The other way to change the actual um, hardness with the keyboard is shift and square bracket keys. And make some change in 25% increments. So what have I got now for brush? If I go control, option, or alt and right click, I've got a very hard brush. Shift and right hand square bracket key makes it harder. Shift and left hand square bracket key makes it softer in 25% increments. So once that's very soft, shift and right hand square bracket key, which is the curly brace, by the way, will make it harder, hard brush, simple as that. Top tip, command and control A to select your whole layer. Then all you have to do is backspace to clear the layer. Backspace going now. Also, I will point out, you can access the brush panel here. You can right click here, or you can go to window, Brushes, which brings them out here. Normally dot with the brush settings, but F5 is another way of accessing that panel, especially if they're dot together. But if you can't see it, window, 
brushes or brush settings. If you've got a problem with your workspace, I'm on the painting workspace, which separates out all the drawing tools. In other words, on an essentials workspace, under the brush would be the pencil, etc. But here, it spreads them out. But all you have to do is go workspace, reset painting, or whatever workspace you're in. What else can I explain? Oversized brushes. If I keep pressing the right hand square bracket key, that's going to turn into a crosshair. That means it's too large for my document window at this view. Left hand square bracket key will make it smaller. If you press the caps lock key, it would also give you a cursor. Caps lock key off. So you either got it too large for your workspace or you got the caps lock key pressed or on, I should say. Just a second, I'm going to bring up another brush. Now, this is obviously too large for my screen or document window. Left square bracket key going now. Now, that's really awkward to go and change other things with. So all you've got to do is press the caps lock key. And I believe that's the reason the caps lock key is there as a keyboard shortcut and enable you to go across and change things without seeing all that bloody great mess until you get right over it. So, yeah, caps lock key has its use. Right, how do you draw a straight line? Let's get back to uh, a hard brush. So let's, right, I'm on a, let's make sure it is hard as well. Control, Option, press down, or Alt, right click. Um, I'm on a soft brush, so let's make it really hard by dragging down. It's far too large. Command, zero to fit on screen. Let's make the brush smaller. Click down once. Shift, key pressed. Click down again, makes a straight line. Straight line, keep the Shift key pressed, or keep making a straight line. Sorry about my document window moving around. It's a problem with uh, Adobe and Apple not talking to each other at the moment, but I won't go into that. Backspace. Right, for opacity, a number on your keyboard. One, 10%. Two, five, done in quick succession, 25%. Zero, 100%. Flow is shift, then a number. Shift, one, 10% flow. And flow is, each time you click and drag, that's one bit of flow. So you're laying down 10% of the ink you could lay down in one stroke. That's the way to look at it. Shift and shift and two, five, 25%. Quite quickly, you've got to do it. Shift and zero back to 100%. Simple as that. Because I've done command and control A already, I've got the marching ants around my layer. Backspace will clear it. The only time that's reversed if you're using the airbrush tool, and I'll show you that quickly, control, option, or alt right click to make the brush softer. It doesn't really work with a hard brush. If you've got the airbrush uh, symbol uh, clicked on, if you press down, it's like an aerosol can. But what happens then is opacity and flow keyboard shortcuts are changed. So shift and one changes opacity instead of flow. So they reverse them around. So shift and zero, put them back to a back to 100%. Alter option shift P, you're not going to remember that, will turn the airbrush off. Backspace to clear the whole screen. Command and control zero to center that on the screen. Picking a color. The method I like is this. Edit, keyboard shortcuts, down the bottom under tools, down the bottom, you can see my document window going everywhere. Down the bottom under tools, foreground color picker, I've chosen a keyboard shortcut of C. It is assigned to the crop tool normally. You'll get a warning message, but it's the best way of working, in my opinion. OK on that. Command or Control zero. So to bring up the color picker now, C, pick a color, or pick a hue, then go pick a tint or shade. Pick a hue here, pick a tint or shade there. Simple as that. The heads up display method, which is in general preferences under color picker, cancel, is on a Mac, Control, Option, Command, press down together. Control, Option, Command, press down together. On a Windows system, Shift, Alt key, right click on the mouse, kept pressed down, and you will access the color picker. Control, Option, Command on my Mac. Pick the hue on the outside, come in and pick the shade or tint on the inside. My preferred method, I would probably, if I was a digital artist, set up another keyboard shortcut for that because pressing three keys down is quite difficult when you're trying to paint. That's why I use the keyboard shortcut method. I just prefer this method by pressing C on my keyboard. Cancel. If you want to sample color on the fly, let's paint down a bit and choose a few colors. Blue, that'll do. One more. Pink color of some sort. If you want to sample color on the fly with any of the drawing tools, 
Alt or Option would change it to an eyedropper tool. I'm currently painting with that purpley colour. Alt or Option kept press, sample on green, I'm painting with green. Eye for eyedropper tool, it's based on this here, so make sure you've got it set up properly. You're sampling the layers you want to be sampling, etc. Show sampling ring, I like that, so I keep it ticked. So if I went back to the brush, Alt or Option key pressed, I was on green, I click on that, I'm back to purple. Absolutely essential for beauty retouching because you don't introduce colours into the face that are not already there. Backspace on my keyboard. Right. Period or full stop and comma. I will say it doesn't work. We can't see it visually if I click here or go right click. So what I do is I go escape, bring out the brush panel by pressing F5, which is dot with my brush settings, go to brushes, and then if you go full stop, you're going forwards through the brushes, full stop or period. We say full stop in the UK, you say period in the States. You're going forward. Now I've got into that other set of brushes there somewhere. Yeah, I have. Comma will take us backwards. Shift and comma will take me to the first brush in that list. Shift and full stop or period will take me to the last brush. I think just using comma and full stop or period to change between two, two brushes is really useful. Command or control zero to center everything on the screen. I'm sorry about this document window floating around all over the place. When you're, it does work, you know, without any panels showing, but what I'm saying is you can't see it visually here. So I had to show it to you on that panel. Escape. Forward slash, let's bring up the layers panel, will lock transparency. Forward slash on, I've locked the transparency, I can't paint on that layer. F7 to lose that layers panel. Quickly, behind and clear won't be available when you've locked transparency. So, forward slash, I'm going to show you behind and clear, well, how behind works. B for brush, my brush is too large. Let's go back to my first brush, shift and comma. So a nice, I believe it's a hard brush, a soft brush. Control, option, or alt right click, if you're on a PC, make that brush really hard. Command zero, sorry about that. Behind works like this, let's paint down, um, let's change F5, change the brush settings. I've got too many um, smooth, uh, too many spaces in that. I'll check them on 38% flow, so that was my fault as well. Shift zero, I'm back to 100% flow. Because that was saved with one of my brushes when I brought those brushes up. Let's clear the screen, let's get rid of that brush panel, say F5. Paint down like that, choose another color, green, nice lurid green. Go up to behind, I can paint behind it. It's a really useful blend mode. The other blend modes are, are not for this video. Backspace to clear the screen. Clear is exactly like using lock transparent pixels on a layer. No different, but it could be useful at some point. I did point out the airbrush tool. Uh, if you haven't got an airbrush stylus with your Wacom tablet, it's not that brilliant. And with the mouse, it's not that brilliant either. But you know, you might find a reason for it. I haven't yet, but for artists, digital artists, the airbrush is very important. Right, coming across here, we no longer use tool presets. Do not use them. We use brush presets. You can use tool presets. It's not recommended. We use brush presets and you can change the way they appear by unticking stuff here. There's a lot going on here. I've covered it in a previous video, link below or above but is a brilliant change what's happened here, but it's not for this video. That would bring up brush settings. Off it goes. The blend modes, all I'm gonna say is alter option, shift, then a letter. Usually the first letter of the blend mode will change to that blend mode. Alter option, shift N, I'll get normal. Alter option, shift S for screen. O for overlay, etc. But G for line, so it's not always the first letter of the blend mode. Artists will use blend modes a lot more. If I cover blend modes in this video, I will be here all day. But not, needless to say, um, multiply and screen are quite useful. If you play around, for instance, if I paint with a normal now, which is Alter Option Shift N, paint down, and I went to darken with that, or multiply without changing the color, it will make it darker in the middle there. If I went to screen, I'll make it lighter in the middle there. To cycle forward through the blend modes, Shift and Plus, or shift and minus to go back. Alt, option, shift, N, back to normal. This is for Wacom tablet users. Let's bring out the brush settings a sec. 
When you tick that, notice that transfer is changing. There, it's ticked it. That's because it's saying control the opacity with pen pressure. I have got a Wacom tablet. I'm going to show you what I mean. So I've just clicked down there by mistake. But if I come over here and press very lightly, as I press harder and harder, it gets more and more opaque. Backspace. There's that one. Right. The next one I ought to show you really quickly is pressure for size. Again, it's ticked shape dynamics. I click there. Size is being controlled by pen pressure. Come across here. As I press down harder, it gets bigger. It gets smaller and bigger. It will wear down your brush tip. I don't believe it gets larger than the size of the brush already. And don't forget, the brush is used in many other tools. So these brush presets can apply to the smudge tool here, for instance, uh, or the, the mixer brush. Brushes have always been brushes. They've always been available. So the brush presets now can apply to several tools. Right, escape to get rid of that. Backspace. What else uh, can I show you? Uh, smoothing. That's new. Let's turn that off the size. Smoothing works like this. Let's put it on 100%. It has got a keyboard shortcut. I will point it out to you in a minute. As you start painting, there's a leash in front of everything. If I backspace and zoom in a bit by going Command or Control Plus, you'll see the leash a bit better. Smoothing is about smoothing off your strokes. It is quite useful, especially if you're a mouse user. So it makes things smoother and less jagged. And it makes you easy to trace around things as well. So backspace to clear the screen. The options are pull string mode, which would make a massive circle. The leash, which we set in preferences we turned on, is coming to the edge. And then you can pull the leash around and follow the outline of things. So it could be really useful. I haven't seen many people use it in anger yet, i.e. on YouTube. So the keyboard shortcut is Alt or Option, then a number. But to get it back to zero, you'd have to go zero twice because zero is normally 100%. So Alt or Option, zero, zero going now, should put it down to 0% quite quickly. So Alton 3 will be 30% smoothing. But let's put it down to zero. Notice under brush settings here, smoothing's on. If I untick it, it turns that smoothing off. The same with build up. If I turn that on, I'm turning the airbrush on. This is a symmetry mode, very new technology preview, new vertical, quickly, just accept it. So if I start drawing now, make the brush a bit smaller, left hand square, square bracket key going, it paints either side of the line like that. Very good. So backspace now, turn it off, symmetry off. What I really like is pen tool. Let's draw a few lines like that, make it a bit curvy. If I now go back to the brush tool, B, come up to here, use selected path, accept it. You can warp it, don't forget, from here as well, and do all sorts of things. But I accept it. If I click, it's doing either side of that that line. Very good. I really do like that. Symmetry off. What else can I um, say? Well, to fill the whole screen, um, command, backspace, will fill, fill, it, fill it with the background color. Alt or option backspace will fill it with the foreground color. If I backspace now and clear everything, if I draw down with that green and then go shift, command, backspace, it only fills the opaque pixels. Really quite useful. Command is the uh, for the background color. Alter options for ground color. Also, Shift F5 will bring up the fill command. I think that's it, guys. I was getting quite tired there because it's quite a long video. And I tried to keep the interesting stuff to the front of the video, the more useful stuff. As it went on, the less useful stuff comes in. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.